Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks video editor to change the balance of component frequencies to your tonal preference and how to remove unwanted noise. All right, welcome back party people. So you may already be familiar with equalizers if you have fiddled much with a home or car stereo or even if you've played a musical instrument. Equalizers really let you tune those frequencies to your preference. I'll show you how to do a similar function in Lightworks Video Editor. But before we get started, I'm gonna take my mug off the screen because I do know it can be distracting. So first I'll show you how to enable the audio equalizer effect and also how you can tell if you have an audio effect enabled in your soundtrack. So, so I already have a project I've imported some clips and I've placed those clips into my sequence editor. And as you can see in the sequence window here, we have a single video track and a pair of audio tracks that are grouped as a stereo pair, A1 and A2. So any change that is made to A1 also is reflected in our A2 audio track. To enable the audio equalizer effect, we move our mouse over the soundtrack, right click, go up to effects, select add, and then move over and we're going to ignore the rest of the drop down menu here because those are presets and we'll come back and talk about those a little bit later on in the video but for now we're going to select eq and we get our equalizer window here i'm just going to select a, uh, a filter here so you can see the curve and let's talk about the specific components of this equalizer window First at the top, you can see we have our A1 and A2 tracks. Remember we have these groups, so they are stereo pairs. So any changes made to uh, A1 will reflect in A2 as well. Moving to the center component of the equalizer window, you can see we have our graph. And on that graph represented on the X axis is our frequency range. And typically a human can hear somewhere between 20 Hertz and 20 kilohertz. That range is represented here. Just note that not all humans can hear all frequencies in that range, specifically when it comes to the extreme low end or the extreme high end of that range. On our Y axis, we have our levels here represented by decibels. So a decibel is a logarithmic ratio that represents a level. And in this case, for example, uh, if we add a 3 dB of boost to our signal, we're going to multiply our level by 2. So if we attenuate our signal by 3 dB, then we have reduced the level by half. And if we add a 10 dB boost to our signal, then it's going to be 10 times the level. And if we attenuate our signal by 10 dB, we're going to get one tenth the signal. Now, as we move down to the last component of our audio equalizer window, you can see that we have five bands that we can enable and apply to our audio tracks here. And also we have a drop down menu that allows us to select the filter type. We have a slider for frequency, a slider for Q factor, and a slider for gain. And depending on the filter that you choose from the drop down menu dictates which of these sliders are enabled. All right, so I'm gonna close this out for one second and I'm gonna show you how you can determine if you have an audio effect applied to your audio channel already. And if you move down to the audio portion of your audio track, you can see this little small square in the top left corner of the audio track. That means that you have an audio effect applied. You can actually click effect settings and you can bring up the settings of the audio equalizer that is applied to that track already. All right, so let's bring our window back up and let's go through the filter drop down. Typically you will find three categories of filters in equalizers and they are the peak, the shelf, and the pass filter. And in this drop down you can see we have a set of filters that all fall into those classifications. So for example we have a low pass, high pass, band pass, constant skirt, band pass, constant peak, and the inverse of a band pass which is a notch, which is a notch filter. These are all somewhat pass filters and we also have our peaking eq which would be our peak filter and then we have both a low shelf and a high shelf filter now we'll go through and talk about each one of these filters i'm going to leave notch filter 
till the very end because the notch filter is a specific scenario that a lot of people find very useful if they're trying to remove noise. For example, maybe a 60 or 50 hertz hum coming from the AC grid or for example, removing fan noise that may be generated from a PC fan or laptop fan. So I'm gonna leave this specific filter for last. Also, I wanna talk a little bit about the Q factor here. The Q factor is the quality factor and depending on how tight or how loose you set the Q factor, depends on how this curve is shaped. And the Q factor usually affects the curve around the cutoff or the center frequency depending on which type of filter you have selected. And I'm gonna sweep through this real quick and show you how it can change the shape. As you notice here, you can see that our, our, our cutoff frequency is set to 1000 Hertz, which is along here. And you can see that as we adjust our, our Q factor, that peak gets more intense. All right, so let's talk about the frequency slider. The frequency slider will represent either a cutoff or center frequency, depending upon the filter that is selected. The gain slider lets you either boost the signal or attenuate the signal. So I'm gonna walk through each one of these filters to demonstrate what these filters can accomplish. And then I'll go through and do a demo and sweep the frequencies and the Q factors to show you how it really affects your audio. The first filter we're gonna talk about is a low pass filter. So as the name suggests, a low pass filter's function is to pass lower frequencies depending upon the cutoff frequency that you select as well as the Q factor that is selected. So you can go through and really shape your audio. And a lot of times what low pass filters are used to do is kind of emulate bass coming from another room. So it's kind of like an audio effect. So if you want to make that muffled kind of bass sound like a stereo playing in a room, maybe two rooms over, a low pass filter will give you the capability to do that. Just keep in mind that you have a cutoff frequency here that changes based on the slider. So you can really, really muffle out with just passing those low bass frequencies, or you can extend this out a bit and change the peak using the Q factor. All right, so I'll go through and actually sweep through some of the sliders here on an audio sample and let you hear how this filter changes the audio. So the high pass filter can be used to really roll off and attenuate those low end frequencies. Say for example, you wanted to highlight a uh, maybe like a 1980s or 1970s telephone ringing that's got that very tinny sound to it. Or if you wanted to remove bass, like think of a fiddle in a orchestra the fiddle is kind of that high pitch is always used to kind of create tension well you can remove the bass from your audio signal and create that tension by only passing those high frequencies and again you could also emulate a number of older things that didn't have that stereo sound to them or they were just a single small uh, speaker or resonance device that sounded very tinny. Okay, we'll go through and sweep through the high pass filter here and demonstrate how a high pass filter actually changes your audio.
All right, so let's talk about our bandpass filters. We have two types of bandpass filters. One's a constant skirt, one is a constant peak, and we'll talk about the difference between those two as we walk through these. Let's start by selecting constant skirt. A bandpass filter is a filter that's commonly used to really isolate a, a band of frequency. Say you wanna pass a band of frequencies, and you can create a, a real kind of um, animatronic sound if you sweep through that band and change the shape of that band. So a lot of times the band pass is used to create some of those weird robotic noises or even kind of alien type noises. So you can kind of play around with that to uh, do that. Typically in uh, radio frequency worlds, band passes are used to isolate that channel so that you don't get bleed over from uh, channels that are adjacent to it. But uh, in audio, they can be used to, to to eliminate some of the low end and some of the high end without having to manipulate both a low pass and a high pass filter together. You have the controls right there in one filter and you can play around with sweeping that and get some really, really cool kind of audio effects out of that as well. So let's talk about bandpass constant skirt a little bit. You can see here that we have a center frequency defined and we can slide through that and change that to whatever frequency you'd like. And say, for example, let's say we choose a frequency somewhere around 47, 41 hertz. That's our center frequency. And you can see the signal start to roll off or attenuate after that center frequency. Now we can change the shape of that curve. And this is called the skirt here where it starts to roll off. And this is called the peak here, obviously, because this is the highest level of the signal and it starts to roll off on the skirts here and for a bandpass constant skirt filter the q factor actually changes the peak and lets the skirts of the band remain the same i'm just going to walk through and change this q factor and you can see we're really boosting the peak of that band by adjusting that q factor to its highest level and likewise, we can really flatten that out. Let's talk about bandpass constant peak. S same function as far as the what the filter does, but in this case, now we have the ability to adjust the roll-off points, our skirts here, and the peak stays the same, and we do that through our Q factor here. So if I really amp that Q factor up, then we get a constant peak and the skirts start to roll off really quickly. And likewise, if we adjust that down, we get a very different looking curve here. Okay, so I'll sweep through a band pass filter so you can hear the difference here and hear some of those unique sounds that are generated by applying those filters to audio tracks. And I'll do both the constant peak and constant skirt, even though they have a similar effect. All right, so we're going to skip notch and we're going to go down to peaking EQ. All right, I'm just going to enhance the graph here so you can see what a peaking EQ does. Peaking EQs, as the name suggests, really lets you boost specific frequencies within an audio track. A lot of times you may want to boost a specific chord or a specific sound from a musical instrument. 
and the peaking EQ really lets you dial into that uh, center frequency and adjust the gain. You can even attenuate. You can really play around with, and to a degree, if you attenuate here, you get a notch filter type function, uh, but really allowing you to select a frequency and highlight that specific frequency. The peak EQ has a uh, very specific bell shape to it, and based on the Q factor here, you can really change how much you isolate that frequency. So we can really flatten out that bell shape and let it kind of roll off outside of the center frequency, or we can tighten that up to a really, really tight peak here by setting the Q factor to, the, to its highest point. I'll run through a couple of sweeps of the peak and EQ so you can see how the peak and EQ affects your audio. Right, next, let's talk about the low shelf filter, and I'm going to adjust this just a little bit so you can see why it's called a low shelf filter. It may not be apparent with these peaks at the select uh, cutoff frequencies here. So I'm just going to change the shape of this shelf a little bit by changing the Q factor and the gain and the frequency. So you can see here, for example, a low shelf allows you to really change all of the low frequencies that are in this shelf here and affect each one of those equally. And you can boost those frequencies altogether or attenuate those frequencies altogether. And notice since this is a low shelf, we are, we are affecting the low frequencies in our spectrum. Notice based on the Q factor here, you can also change the shape of this curb around the shelf cutoffs. So you can see we can really make those peaks large or really round those off. And this filter is commonly used when you want to apply the same amount of attenuation or boost to a range of frequencies. Therefore, it's called the shelf of frequencies and we'll walk through a sweep of the low shelf filter to show you how that affects your audio.
a high shelf filter does the opposite where now you are working with the higher frequencies in the spectrum of frequencies here similar options here except now the shelf is going to be affecting the high end frequencies you can see we can boost those or attenuate those and really change the shape using our q factor so we'll sweep through a high shelf filter as well and show you how that affects audio All right, so our last filter is our notch filter and our notch filter almost looks similar to our peaking filter in the notch filter the gain is already attenuated for you so minus 9.28 it's almost one tenth the level of any other frequency in here so the notch filter is named appropriately since it is taking a notch out of the frequency range and you cannot actually attenuate based on the gain here what you can select is the frequency you want to cut out and you can select the shape of that curve. So this Q factor really lets you dial in on how much you're affecting the adjacent frequencies on both sides of the peak. And so I'll just move this here to show you that you can really tighten up this notch or you can really let it roll off and attenuate a lot of the adjacent frequencies in this notch and the notch filter is typically used to notch out unwanted frequencies it could be a hum from the power grid that could be fan noise from a pc or laptop fan it could be some other type of noise that gets generated in your audio recording room that you you just can't design the room around it's a very useful filter and i will walk through a problem audio stream that I was recording that had a lot of fan noise from my laptop that was in background of my voice and I was able to apply a notch filter to get it probably 70 or 80 percent better than it was obviously I couldn't remove all of the noise but uh, it was a marked improvement so I'll walk through that clip show you how to actually sweep through the frequency here while the clip is playing to really identify where the problem frequencies are and then setting those and applying those to a band to eliminate those noises. So let's walk through sweeping through a notch filter. Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks video editor to change the balance of frequency components to meet your tonal preference or to eliminate and to eliminate or attenuate unwanted noise. Today I'll show you how to use all right, so you can tell there is a lot of noise, specifically fan noise around my voice as well as on top of my voice. So we really want to try to use the sweep functionality of the audio equalizer to help identify those frequencies that we want to notch out. Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to change the balance of frequency components to meet your tonal preference or to eliminate and to eliminate or attenuate unwanted noise. Today I'll show you how to use today I'll show you how to use the today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer in Light Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to change the balance of frequency components to meet your tonal preference or Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to
Today I'll show you how to use the audio. Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to change the balance of frequency components. To you may also have more than one group of frequencies to notch out, so use multiple bands. Today I'll show you how to use the audio. Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to change the balance of frequency components to meet your tonal preference or to eliminate and to eliminate or attenuate unwanted noise. Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to change the balance of frequency components to meet your tonal preference or to eliminate and to eliminate or attenuate unwanted noise. Today I'll show you how to use Today I'll show you how to use Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor to change the balance Today I'll show you how to use the audio Today I'll show you how to use the audio equalizer effect in Lightworks Video Editor all right, so in that last clip there, I disabled the two notch filters that I applied, and you can tell there's quite a bit of difference. It's not perfect. I didn't spend a whole lot of time. There's a, a bunch of different ways you can go in and kind of identify these frequencies. Using Audacity is one of those, but this did make a market improvement. So the last item on the agenda is to cover the presets. So there are some equalizer presets that are available in Lightworks. So we'll go back to, we'll go, so we'll go back to our sequence editor, highlight our audio track, right click, go up to effects, add, and then we'll move over. And this time we're going to set, we're going to select a couple of these just to show you what they are. Uh, 60 hertz main hum removal. And you can see this is just a notch filter set at 60 hertz with the Q factor turned all the way up to 10. So it's a very tight Q factor here. You can use these presets to your advantage because you can actually take these and then manipulate them to however you see fit for your audio preference. So let's take a look at a low end booster. And we can see here this particular filter has four bands applied. The first band is using a peaking EQ to really kind of ramp up the low end frequency around 91 Hertz. You can see here a 5.7 dB gains. We click over on band two, you can see we have another peaking EQ around 123 Hertz. Not as much boost on this particular frequency, but the Q factor is smoothed out a bit. And if we take a look at band three around 425 Hertz, uh, we have a very slim Q factor there and a very small gain of one half dB. And you can see that that's a very smoothed out Q factor. And likewise on band four, we have another frequency selected here at 3600 Hertz and a gain of 2.5 dB. And the Q factor is really low too. So you get this really rounded curve. You can see there as I stretch it out, you can use these to your advantage. Like I said, you can go in and select these and make changes as necessary and save them as your own or you can just use them as starting points and then make the changes that you need to. Okay, so that'll do it for the content for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, give me a thumbs up or hey, give me a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy the content. Just let me know that you're out there watching the videos and you know what to do until next time. Skill up and ride, van up and go, and hey, everybody needs a plan B. Cha-cha for now.